Okay, the answers are on the board. I would like you to discuss for a minute. On your marks, get set, go. Okay, people, who got number one? How did you match it up with the letter C? Austin? I went down, I went down, um, I went down, um, four. What? <laughs> oh, wait, which one? The C. Oh, yes. So you went down four. Okay. Down four. And was the right six. Okay, so you went based on the slope. Okay. So you put what? What was your slope then? Negative two over three. Okay. What else do you need for the equation? What's the y intercept? It's zero, comma, one. So your equation should have been y equals negative two over three x plus one. So that matches up with C. number one, C. Okay. Do you guys want to know the easy way to do all these problems? Okay. The intercepts are all different. So just match up the intercepts. Do you guys agree? Hold on. Let's look at letter C. It goes through zero, one, right? So the intercept must be? The only intercept with plus one was number one. The intercept for number two needs to be negative two. Which graph has a y-intercept of negative 2. It's D, so number 2 needed to be D. Number 3, the y-intercept was? Negative 1. So all you needed was a y-intercept of negative 1. Which one has a y-intercept of negative 1? A, okay? It goes through 0, negative 1. And then lastly, B was the, has a y-intercept of positive 2. So literally by just the intercepts, guys, you could have matched all of them up. How many people did that? Good, okay? How many people use the slopes and everything? Okay, it's fine. I'm not gonna tell you that you're wrong if you use the slopes, but try to just do each problem the easiest way possible. And all of these had different y-intercepts, so you could literally just match them up that way, okay? Questions on the warm-up. Sophia, did that make more sense when I went over it? Casey, you're good? David, what's up? You're just stretching? Okay, guys, today we start chapter four, okay? I know chapter three was a lot, okay? Now, chapter four starts off a lot easier than chapter three did, okay? But it builds on the stuff from chapter three, okay? So we have to kind of make sure that we know slope and we know y-intercepts. Do we remember slopes and y-intercepts? Okay, so that's what we're starting with. Instead of like graphing now, we are going to start with a graph or start with information and we're going to write the equation, okay? So next to 4.1 when it says writing equations in slope intercept form, please underline writing equations. That's the big difference between chapter three and chapter four. We're not going to be given the equation anymore. We have to come up with it ourselves, okay? Now, it says writing equations in slope intercept form. Who can tell me what is slope intercept form? Natalie. Very good. Write it down. Y equals mx plus b. Where m is what? What information does m give us? Alec? Three. What? Three. No, oh, yeah. You're working on the first example. But in general, Alec, what is m? The number. Yeah, it's a number, but it represents what? The slope. The slope. Very good. Okay. So m is our slope. And what's b, peeps? Y -intercept. Which intercept? Y. The y-intercept. Okay. People mess that up on the test. It's not the x-intercept. Understood? It is the y-intercept. How do you find the x-intercept? You make y equal to zero, okay? All right. So we need to write each of these in slope-intercept form, but we're given two things. We're given m and we're given b. Who thinks they can come up with the equation for letter a? AJ? Y equals three plus one-half. One You're missing something. Caitlin? The x, okay? It needs to be 3x plus 1 half. M goes next to what? And your b value goes at the end as a constant. Yes? Are we confident on this? This tells me that my slope is 3 and my y-intercept is 0, 1 half. Yes? Letter B. A little bit different. What do you guys think? Mr. Fuxa? Y equals negative two. Bingo. Y equals negative two. Someone explain how Christian got there. How did Christian get that? How did Christian get Y equals negative two? Mia? 
Good. M is zero. So watch when we write it. Y equals zero X minus two. Do you guys agree that's how we should have written it? Yeah. Juliana, why does zero X disappear? Because it's zero. Zero times anything is still zero. Do you guys agree? So zero minus two gives me negative two. Now comes to the hard part. What kind of line is y equals negative two? Who's been paying attention lately? Oh. What kind of line is y equals negative two? Andrea? Very good. It's a horizontal line. Write that down. More specifically, guys, what does a horizontal line have as its slope? It's zero. Was our slope zero here? Are we making that connection? Perfect. Okay. Next one. If M was seven, B was two. David, let me see what you know. What you got? Y equals 7X, seven X plus, two. plus two. You guys with me? Salucci? Okay. Salucci, what's letter D? Um, y equals one third minus, one third X minus one. Good. Are we all on the same page? Any questions so far on what I've done? So it's fairly easy when they give us the slope and the y-intercept. Do you guys agree? Now, the next examples, they're not going to give us the slope. We're going to have to calculate the slope ourselves, okay? So take a look down at the graph, okay? We're still writing an equation of each line in slope-intercept form, but we don't know the m or the b. We have to figure them out for ourselves based on this graph, okay? So let's start with finding the slope, okay? So write m equals. Now, when we're dealing with a graph, okay, does anyone remember how to ha find the slope when we're dealing with a graph? Mia? Y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Excellent. The slope formula. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? Now, I'm going to use the easy way. And I think I've shown you this before. We also know slope is rise over run, okay? When we're given the graph, using rise over run is possible because we can just count the spaces that the, the line moves. Do you guys agree? So we're going to write rise over run. Can you start at either point? Yes. yes. So which one would you like to start at, Casey? Which point would you like to start at? 4-3. Four, 4-3. Three. Four, three. Okay, let's start at 4-3. And let's do our rise component first. How do we need to move to get to the next point? In which direction and how much? To the left by four. Remember, rise first. So Down, Down six. six. You guys agree that is minus six? Mm -hmm. Why is it minus six and not plus six? Karen? Down. Down is always negative. Very good. Now what do I do? Move to the left. left. How many, David? Four. Four. What represents left four? Negative four. So it counts out if you did it away before, it would give you six over four. It would give you six over four. Now, let me ask you guys, what is negative six over negative four? Six over four. It is six over four, but you can't leave it like that either. It's three over two. Why? Why? Why can't I leave it as six over four? It's not simplified. Sophia? If you're gonna count it on the graph, you have gone up six and gone over four. Correct. If you go up six into the right four, they're both positive, right? Do you get the same slope? Yes. Okay, so even if you go down and left, it's the same as going up and right. Gucci? Yeah, go ahead. If the slope was like two over two, would you change it to one? Yes. If the slope is two over two, you must change that slope to one. Okay. Um, now, What's the other component that we need before we can write our equation? We found the slope. Oh, we need the, um, the y-intercept. You need the y-intercept, which is what letter? B. B. What's my y-intercept, and how do you know? Austin? Negative three. It's negative three. How do you know that? Because it crosses the y-axis. Guys, it's negative three because it crosses the y-axis at zero comma negative three. Do we see that? Whenever your x is zero, that's your y-intercept. Do you guys agree? So B is equal to negative three. This line crosses the Y-intercept at negative three. 
Who, did I lose anyone there? We're all Gucci with that? Okay, this is not my answer. What's my final answer? Caitlin? Y equals X minus three. X minus three is close. What is she missing? Addison? I have a question. Okay, hold on. What is she missing, Kyra? Three over two X minus three. Addison, what's your question? What's a negative divided by a negative? Do you agree that that fraction bar just means division? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Think about the negatives canceling out with each other. Okay. Yeah, Andrea. So for 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. You could pick your own. Did you mean like you want to pick this point as well? Yeah. As long as both the points lie on the line, you're going to get the same slope no matter which two you pick. Oh, so this one you would go up three and then to the right two, right? Mm -hmm. Plus three plus two. Do you agree that's the same as three over two? Oh, yeah, and you have to go up and down. Correct. Mm -hmm. Or you could go down, but that you'd be going down into the left, which is also positive. Okay? As long as the two points lie on the line, you're going to get the same slope. Austin? Yes. Any other questions? These are good questions, people. Keep them coming. Okay, next one. B. What do I do? Alec. Okay. Excellent. That's the slope formula. Instead of the slope formula, I would like to do the easy way because it's already on a graph. What, can, what else can I use for slope? Karen? Okay. And I write what for slope? Yeah. Uh huh. Natalie? Rise over run, okay? Rise is the vertical component, run is the horizontal. Which point do you wanna start at, Kira? Birthday girl? You wanna start at the bottom one? Okay, where would we have to move Mia to get to the top point? Uh, left. Yes, but let's do up and down first. Up and, oh, okay, so up. Mm -hmm. Three times. Three. So plus three, and then to the left, how many? Four. Which of those two is my rise? Three. So it's three over negative four. Negative four. Am I done? No. no. Why not? I, uh, I need to find my y-intercept. Who can tell me what the y-intercept is of this guy and why? Christian? The y-intercept is, uh, two, or just two. It's two, why? Good. Do you guys see where my line crosses the y-axis? It's at 2. What's my x-intercept here? Um, Natalie? Like 2.95. Yeah, it's like 2 point something, right? It's between what two numbers? 2 and 3. Two and three. Okay, do we know what it is exactly? No. No. How, could we figure out what it is exactly? Mm -hmm. How do you find out exactly what the y-intercept <coughs> is? Or the x-intercept. You make y equal to 0. But we don't have an equation yet, okay? So once we get that equation, then we can figure it out, okay? What's my equation, though? What's my equation going to be of this guy? Matthew? Uh, y equals 3 over negative 4 x uh, plus 2. Plus 2. Very good, okay? I'm going to write this in two other ways, and they're all the same. Someone tell me why. y equals negative 3 over 4 x plus 2, and y equals negative 3 over 4 x plus 2. All three of these are the exact same. They're all the right answer, but they all look slightly different. What's different about them? Juliana? Where the negative is. Does it matter if the negative goes in the numerator, the denominator, or outside? As long as there's how many of them? One. If there were two negatives there, would that be the same thing? No. Why not? Because they would cancel out and become a positive. Do we see the difference there? So when you rise down, so when you go down and to the left, it's actually what kind of a slope? If you go down and to the left, what kind of slope would this line have? Positive. Do you guys see that? Because two negatives make a positive. Do you guys agree? So rising up 
and to the right is the same as rising down and to the left. Okay? It makes a box. Okay? It all depends on which point you started at. Okay? Kind of? A little bit? Okay, let's do more examples. Andrea, save your question. Okay? Let's do C together and then I'm going to set you guys loose on D. Okay? What do I do? Matthew. Uh, you rise from zero over one twice. Okay. You go up two. I agree. And then go to the right four times. Excellent. So plus four and plus two. What is Matthew finding right now? The slope. The slope. So M equals what? Two over, M two over four. Rise over run. And David says it's two over four. Do we agree with David? Yes. yes. No. Is this the final answer for the slope? No. Why not? No. You can simplify, right? It becomes one over two. Guys, what's my y-intercept? What's my y-intercept? Gabriel, what's my y-intercept? One. It's one. Why? Because the first point is on the y-axis and it then on one. Very good. Whenever your x value is zero, that's a y-intercept. Are we clear on that? Okay, so zero comma one is our y-intercept. Who can help me with the equation? David. Y equals one over 2x plus one. One over 2x plus one. Is David correct? Yes. I agree with him. Okay. If you're Gucci on this stuff, okay, I want you to try D on your own. Don't talk about it. Don't look at anyone else's iPad. Try it on your own. If you had a question and you patiently waited, thank you. I will take all questions on the previous examples or right now. Gurneys. No. Very good question. Did you guys hear Garnice's question? She asked, does it matter which point you started on? Garnice, I'm going to do this example and start at the other point so you can see it, okay? Let's say we started at 4, 3, right? You agree you would go down 2, right? So it would be negative 2. And then to the left, how many, Garnice? Four, right? So minus 4. Which is my rise? Which one of those two is my rise? the negative two, and my run, negative four. What do you get when you do negative two divided by negative four? Yep, you simplify it. Negative one over negative two. And when you divide a negative by a negative, you get a? So it's positive one half. Was that our slope for the other one? Did it matter which point we started at? Okay, do you see how that works? Cool. Any other questions, guys? We're working on D. Mia, what's up? So it doesn't matter what the negative is in the slope? No. But if it's a negative slope, if the slope's going down, it should, it, there should only be one negative. Okay? And if there's two negatives, it's what kind of a slope? Positive. Positive. The answer to D is on the board. Check what you got and discuss for 30 seconds, go. What's up? Two methods that we talked about. What was the major difference? The first examples were super easy. The second examples got a little bit more difficult. Why? Natalie? Because it shows you flat out what and the slope. Very good. The first examples gave us what? Uh, the slope and y-intercept. Good. We were given the slope and y-intercept. And in the second ones, we had to calculate it. Do you guys agree? Make sure you know the difference between those two methods, okay? The first one's super easy, okay? Second ones get more challenging because you have to calculate your slope, okay? And the next ones add a little bit of flavor, okay? All we're given are the points, no graph. All we're given are the points, no graph, okay? Oh, check it out. 
Look at the next examples. Okay, David is like super excited because he knows what to do. What do you think we do? We have to use y, y2 minus y1. Yeah. Let's go! We have to use, what do we call this? Do you guys remember what it's called? Slope formula. The slope formula. It's m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Because now we cannot use rise over run because there's no graph. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Could we graph this ourselves and do rise over run? Absolutely, but wouldn't that waste a lot of time? Yes. Okay, we can use the slope formula. But what do I, how do I know what x1, y1, x2, and y2 are? Karen, label them, okay? Make the first point x1 and y1. Do you guys agree? And my second point becomes? x2 and y2. x2 and y2. When I plug in, what do I get? When I plug in, what do I get? Austin? Good. Did you guys see that? Now, let's make sure not to make this mistake. What is negative 1 minus 5? It's negative 6. And 0 minus a negative 3. Austin? 3. Positive 3. Why? Two Mia? Two make positive. Very good. When you subtract a negative, it's a positive. Gucci? Questions? Okay. What's negative 6 divided by 3? Because we should know that. Negative 2. two. two. Not 1 half. Yes? Negative 2. Okay. What did we just find? No, slope. slope. Now, hey, listen to me. We are putting it in what form? Yeah, we know that as what form? Slope, slope intercept, right? We just found the slope. What's the second half of the equation? Intercept. intercept. Isn't that cool? Okay. So, what is the intercept? Why, Mia? Because the zero is negative. Very good. Okay, so you just grab this negative one because this was the y-intercept. The x was zero. You know that b must be negative one. What's my equation, Mateo? No, I'm asking, uh, oh. how do you know that the y-intercept is negative one? Yeah, not the other one. Well, zero this point, why is that point not a y-intercept? David? Because, um, x, was not equal to zero. x was not equal to zero. In this one, do you see what x was equal to? Whenever x is 0, what are you finding? The y-intercept. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we know that b is equal to negative 1, so y must equal what? Negative 1. No. Y negative 2x minus 1. Both components. If y was equal to negative 1, what would my slope have been? Horizontal line. So my slope is? 0. zero. If y is ever equal to number, your slope must be zero. Gabriel. How'd you get negative one as b? Where was x equal to zero? When y was equal to negative one. Okay, always use the point where x is zero. So there's always gonna be zero. Correct, okay, in this lesson. Okay, b, what do I do? Your slope formula. Slope formula, what is it, Mia? Thank you. What do I do after that? Come on, someone new. Someone new. What? What, Alec? Label your points. X1, Y1, X2, and Y2. What do I do after that? Addison? You do negative 5. Mm-hmm. Yep. Over eight minus zero. Mm -hmm. Negative five minus a negative five. Any takers? Who wants to take that on? Austin. Uh, it'll be something over uh, a negative eight. Zero over a negative eight? Yeah. It's a positive eight. Okay, but I agree, we're gonna get nothing over here because it's negative five plus five. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Over eight. What's negative five plus five? Yeah. Zero. What's zero over eight? eight. Undefined, right? Undefined. No. Zero. Can you divide zero by eight? Yeah. No, yes, you do. You can do it. Zero divided by eight is? Zero. 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 What can't you divide by? 
Zero, okay? You can't divide by zero, so zero should never be where? In the denominator. In the denominator. If you see zero in the denominator, <gasps> did you guys hear that? Zero in the denominator undefined. Do you guys hear that? The D's? Zero in the denominator undefined. <laughs> ah, I just made that connection. Do you guys hear that? Yeah. Denominator undefined, okay? But if it's in the numerator, is it okay? No. Yes, the slope is still zero. So my M is zero, yes? Yeah. What's my other thing that I need? The Y intercept. What's my B here? Y. When X is zero, Y is negative five. Do we see that? So B equals negative five. What kind of line is this? How did you know it's horizontal? Yes, the slope is zero, okay? So Y equals? Negative five. That's it. How are we feeling? Okay, do, do you see? Scary. <laughs> Let's go, it's not scary, come on, it's the same thing. You can do it, let's go. Andrea, yes, quickly. 30 seconds, talk with each other, go. Even if you all got it right, ask about how they got it right. Make sure your steps are the same. Take a look at the next examples. What's different in these examples? F of X, write it at the top, people, okay? Now, this is the exact same thing that we just did, and I'm gonna explain how, okay? But instead of using Y and X, we're using F of X and X, okay? Each of the two things that they just gave us are points. What was my input for the first function? Zero, and what was my output? 10, so my first point is zero comma 10. What about the second point? 6, 34. My input was 6. My output was 34. I'm going to do the exact same process, but at the end, I'm not going to get y equals. What am I going to have? F of x. F of x equals, okay? This is the only difference when it's in function notation. Let's do this one together, and then you guys do the next one on your own. What do I need to find to write the equation? You need the y intercept. I need the y intercept and? More importantly, I need the slope, peeps, okay? How do you find the slope of this? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Let's make this X1. Let's make this Y1. Let's make this X2 and Y2. We're going to do Y2, which is 34 minus 10 over 6 minus 0. 34 minus 10? 24. And 6 minus 0? 6. What's 24 divided by 6? 4. Am I done? What else do I need? The B. What's the B? It's 10. Okay. I'm going to write Y equals 4X plus 10. But I have made a serious mistake. Ah, what needs to replace Y? F of X. This is the only change. Do we see it? Yeah. Okay. This is all that needs to change. Is your final answer needs to be written as F of X. Correct. Mm -hmm. Any questions? The process is the same. When it's written like this, you need what? F of X. Gucci? Okay, try the next one. Go. Is this one f of x? It's g of x, people. Put it at the top so you don't, don't forget it, okay? g of x. Make your points, find your slope, find your y-intercept, and your Gucci. Shh. Alec. Answers on the board. Check what you did. Talk to each other. Let's go, people.